hi guys welcome to my channel it's me Ogeichi welcome <laughs> from the title of this video you could see that I'll be speaking on some sensitive topics and these topic topics are sensitive to me and to people that I speak about in this video this video will be a three-part video because I do not want it to be too long and want it to be engaging and want it to reach the audience that I I am hoping for that it will reach so before we begin I'd like to pray over this video because of the issue that I'm speaking about I want it to come across good and I want it to not just be a talk sh video but some sort of way um, help someone out spiritually to overcome the issues that I'll be speaking about so I'm going to pray the prayer of the Holy Spirit to help me speak um, in the best way that I can and communicate effectively to the audience so that God could help them and so that they could seek for godly help in terms of overcoming the spiritual and practical aspect of the topics that I will be speaking about. So we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come Holy Spirit, fill the heart of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirits and they shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O oh God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the heart of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, with that being said, let's begin. So, the title of the video is talking about pornography, child pornography, or first time watching pornography, <laughs> um, sexual exploitation, and as I mentioned right through my prayer, how the Holy Spirit could help you overcome such issues if you have it or if you have a child that is struggling with such problem. So because this is a sensitive topic, I've had to write this topic down to guide me in my thoughts and in what I need to say. So, do you guys know that pornography in today's society has become so normalized and we don't realize it in movies that we watch or we, you let our, your children watch and things that happen in the society, um, things that they see, it just becomes so normalized that people think it's okay. Um, if someone tells you I'm a porn star, it's, um, it's kind of okay nowadays because at the end of the day we're talking about feminism and people saying it's their right. However, I would like to help you in terms of realizing how some of these children can end up in such situations in terms of your children i mean i don't have any child but i have come up worked with young people and have come across lots of them to know some of these things and the stories that affect them so if you would want to know why good girls or good boys go bad even when they are raised as christians and you see them deviate, especially in terms of moral, um, sexual immorality, then keep watching. If you would want help to set your child, if your child is the one that is in this situation, if you want to know how to set your child free from this issue of sexual immorality, or set him free from being um, addicted to pornography then you need to keep watching and when I mean set him free I mean in a godly way so in this video I'll be talking about pornography as I mentioned child exploitation and 
how you can practical ways and tips and spiritual ways and tips to help your child or you yourself if you are the one who this is affecting to overcome the spirit of sexual immorality that can really from some, some things that I've heard um, can actually can affect your marriage very dearly and any relationship the person gets into in their life um, so let's begin so I work as a youth worker um, well I work with young people of different age groups and in the in working with young people in general i work with them in different capacities um, in working with young people you are giving training different training starting from safeguarding training this is in uk i don't know about other countries but this is in uk i think it'll be similar in america um, and other parts of europe i believe so you'll be giving um safeguarding training um child protection training and then i think since 2015 i don't know you this child exploit child sexual exploitation training is now a, a new addition to all this training um it's been there for some time so i remember the first time i did it was back in 2014 that i did my first training in child sexual exploitation so what is child ex sexual exploitation it really is a training that helps you as a worker as a uh, parent if I think every parent should actually have this training it's unfortunate it's not available to them so as a worker that works with young people if you have any interaction with young people you'll be given this training um, and it's a training that helps you understand how your child can be exploited or how children are exploited sexually um, both the ones that you physic see physically and the ones that you don't see physically um, so what they do I'll just mention some of the learning objectives that often are covered in these topics is one so you to understand how ch um, child how child exploitation sexual exploitation works um, is for you to also look out for some signs and things to help you know whether your child is being exploited or not it also helps you know the issues surrounding it um, in regards to young people and understanding what consent is they are giving during these trainings in schools now to make children aware of what consent is in terms of sexual exploitation um, and you should be aware well it makes you aware of the method of grooming and grooming is like someone buying your child things every single time and grooming them in a way to lure them into themselves and sexually exploit them to say it could be buying gifts and um, seeing little things that makes a person um, a child who may not under fully understand the perpetrator's mind to um, go out with them and also helps you to know what the who the perpetrators are most of the time the perpetrators are not the um, people that you think about is often those that you cannot you cannot imagine that happens um, it could be anyone and sometimes it could be you I'm not joking like sometimes um, we can sexually exploit our children without knowing it that this doesn't have to be physical it could be truly old things that we encourage sexual exploitation and um, encourage the habit of sexual immorality to say um so it also tells you some of the agencies you need to refer the children to and the rest if you don't if you know how on how to handle it if it affects your family or some sort <sighs> okay <laughs> so during my training i often used to just you know read the training it, to me was like over and over again you know like when they give you training over you like i know this thing i know this thing until this earlier this year something just clicked in my head to say oh these things that these people are talking about these things that i've experienced 
things that I've seen and things that other people have told me about and I thought to myself that it's great to share to help out any parent who is struggling um, in terms of if their child is becoming sexually exploited you need to remember when people are being sexually exploited especially if it's children they often don't understand it so they will feel like you are the one who who is the enemy when the perpetrator is giving them what they want so if they want let's say a um, new phone that you cannot afford and the perpetrator buys it and gives them all these nice things you can become the enemy all of a sudden because according to them you are the one stopping their progress <laughs> So this is kind of the psychological ways that people can be manipulated. Um, so let's begin. <laughs> Sorry, this video is a bit. It is very sensitive. I wouldn't. I can't tell you how uncomfortable I am speaking on this issue, but it has been put into my heart and into my mind. I would say by the Holy Spirit because um, some parents have approached me with some issues that their children are facing and I've overheard some students in school sometimes speaking on these sort of things and the way they talk about it you think um, is a new norm but it's not a new norm because you need to be careful of what your child does it affects them whether they know it or not in, if not now affects them in the future so before I begin I'm going to ask you as a parent um, these questions and then I'll go into the stories that I want to share as I mentioned this will be a two-part video so the first part I will be just asking the questions making you conscious and making you aware of some of the things that you need to be looking into um, and then this second part is telling my own personal stories and stories of people that i know of and things that happened in my life um and then the next part of the video which you upload when i get gather the emotions to do so as well will be then giving you practical advice and spiritual advice on how to overcome it through the work of the holy spirit who is living in all of us if you're a christian and if you're a believer it works all the time if you choose for it to work for you so let's begin with the first question is where is your child right now do you know what your child is doing are they with someone and if so do you know what they are doing do you know what your child is reading right now do you know how it affects them do you know what your child is watching or what they listen to this could be TV this could be in real life like friends and other things that they hear and see have you noticed a change in your child's behavior especially in the way they carry their body for example they start all of a sudden if they never used to do it gradually start dressing very immodestly and um, like so showing off themselves in a very sexually um, oriented way and then you see them speak of like topics on sex very openly and thinking like not just openly like oh someone did something like this like openly in terms of they feel like it's okay for them to start having sex at the age they are i'm talking about young children at this particular point so have you noticed the way they speak about certain things let's say boys if he's a girl and girls if he's a boy have you looked into their rooms to see what is in their rooms some of the posters some of the things that they see, look at have you checked in between the books to see what they are locking inside in their wardrobe in anywhere have you checked could you also be sexually exploiting your child or abusing your child without knowing it remember sexual abuse is not just physical it can happen in different ways so the stories I'm about to tell you is some of the things that happened in the lives of people the parents that approached me and there as I mentioned the next video will then explain on my own personal story of this issue so
years ago there was a parent when i went to um like i used to attend daily mass sometimes and i still attend right now every now and then so daily mass would be like between monday to friday and um on saturday if you wish to go but um one of the days that i went and um i remember watching this woman from a distance and she was so um disheartened you can look just looking at her you can see she's so disheartened and seemed like she's just pondering on a lot of things and just praying and and you can just see she feels like she's always almost in tears after the mass i just sat down prayed and then left um very quickly after she joined me and then we got on the bus and went into the city center and before we got in inside the city center this woman after looking at me for such a while because we were all coming from the same church so she looked at me and then said to me please can you help me i was like what <laughs> She's like, please, can you help me and my family, my daughter, to be precise. She's the only daughter that I have. And I asked her what happened. Um, she told me all sorts of, sort of things that her child was doing. And she said she tried raising this child in a very godly way, in a very Christian way. And the child was just um, going off and she's not listening to her. She's trying to help the child, but the child it seems to be rejecting her, everything. Um, this really got me and um i would really pray i just pray, made a quick prayer in my heart i'm like god please give me a word to encourage this woman to know that it's not over and you can see she's like been praying asking for help asking for god to help asking for mother mary to help and um i was so touched by that story that um i just said to her listen your child will be fine your child just continue praying because prayer is the only way if a child stop listening that is the only way you can get the child to hear. There are so many stories in the Bible where the child doesn't listen, but because of the mother's prayer, I've seen so many testimonies. The child, for some reason, at the end of the day, becomes that child the mother dreams of. That good child, that Christian loving child that the mother would want the child to be. I just encourage her. I'm like, if you think of it anyways, in the Bible, Jesus didn't want to perform a miracle because the mother commanded it, because the mother asked, she did it and this is why i said to her like i didn't go quoting but i was just thinking in my head like this is the same way that god can help this woman that whatever you put in prayer god will hear you he will change the mind of that stubborn child or whoever it is and that really that was just the encouragement i said to her and she said to me please can you pray for me and my child and i asked her what is your child's name because i felt the need to need know that name so i can pray specifically for that child and then um she gave me the name of the child and yes i did after going off on my business on that day i did pray for that child i prayed for that child i think almost a month calling her name and saying you will listen to your mother you will listen to the voice of god whatever that has happened in your life whatever demon whatever it is that is making you to go off on this um negative road that your mother has said you're going off on you will come back from it and the devil will not have control over your life um after that um, I, I think that was one of the, my first eye opening to realize there's so many things that many parents are pondering about especially in this regards of sexual issues and child misbehaving in a way that is not godly and I said to myself, this this has to be, something has to give. So I continue praying and then I think that's, I don't know, but I think that's when I kind of start praying and then start praying for other people more. So now recently I've had a woman that I was supporting and this woman broke down in tears when she told me that her child like we were just talking she's saying she was telling me that she has lost control of her family and told me all the issues that happened in her life and now she said like the time that she broke up broke down and started crying well she's now she's discovered her child is now watching pornography <sighs> 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 
So I say to her, that's that's fine. Like I'm here to help. You ask me to help. This is the things I'll, I'll try and help. She asks for the practical ways that she could um, she could help, which is kind of getting the child outside of the home. Because if we live in, if you live in the UK, it's really very um, it's very difficult to actually find things to do outside, especially um, when it's cold. Um, so lots of time children seem to be locked inside and their first thing they do when they come back from school is put on the tv um watch as much tv they can watch or do whatever they wish to do play on their computer game do anything and this is not a great way to raise a child i must say because the child must be intellectually engaged um physically engaged and emotionally engaged at all times they must you must be feel their um physical emotional intellectual um spiritual and language development you all need to do all those things and just allowing them to watch any sort of tv they wish to watch is not the best way so again i prayed for these parents and encouraged them that it will be okay what i've done then is to just talk about these issues in more details and in my next part of this video i'll be then telling you my own personal stories because i am not innocent of all this and would like to share and hopefully help another parent who is struggling and overcome this issue remember the devil has no hold on us and we can overcome if we choose to overcome and make sure you are doing your best for your child and directing them in the way that they should go remember the bible says that if you direct the child the way they should go they would follow and it's you the parents who has the authority not the child and sometimes i see many parents give their child children the authority over them and that is not the right way to raise a child a child cannot speak over you you should be the one to direct the child when they grow up they'll have the voice and that's simple how it works as you grow older your confidence develops and everything starts going if you cannot control your child while they are still young it will be definitely difficult for them, you to control them when they grow older so as i mentioned if i continue talking this video will be just so long um so i'm just going to stop here and then in the next video i will tell you about my own stories thank you for watching <sighs> Thank you, Lord, for helping me to speak. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.